Live from Sydney, 7 News with Sally Bowery. Good afternoon. First at four, we're standing by for details of the Ruby Princess inquiry with the findings report handed to the government set to be made public. The Prime Minister was quizzed on the cruise ship debacle earlier today, pointing the finger at New South Wales health authorities rather than the Australian Board of Force. While State Opposition Leader Jody McKay has already called out the Premier. I think it's really important today that the Premier uh, does give a formal apology to the families involved. We'll have more on this story as details come to hand. A man in his 20s has become the nation's youngest coronavirus casualty. Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews confirmed the news, one of 14 deaths overnight with 372 new infections. Any death uh, because of this global pandemic is a terrible tragedy and I think you are correct to assume that that is the youngest person and uh, we, uh, we're very saddened by that and we send our best wishes to that person's family. There are now more than 3,000 infections without a known source in the state. Police have today cleared the Tangara School for Girls of any public health breaches following complaints from parents. Even so, the community there remains on edge. Robert Avadia is at Castle Hill. Rob, the number of infected school students is growing. Sally, this behind me is the Castle Hill pop-up testing clinic. It has been a fairly constant stream of customers here today and there is a very good reason for that. Tangara School for Girls is only just down the road. It is the centre of Sydney's most concentrated cluster. A 21st case confirmed today, one of the school's students in fact, while Dooley's Catholic Club at Lidcombe has also confirmed another case. It remains closed and anyone who visited Dooley's between last Friday and Monday has been asked to quarantine. St Vincent's College Potts Point is another closed for cleaning with a new infection there while Liverpool Hospital has also confirmed its third case, a staff member. We're concerned that there's community transmission we haven't picked up and that's what bothers us the most and, and keeps me awake at night. While the rate of new infections has remained relatively steady, just nine in the past 24 hours, there is increasing pressure on the government to force public transport commuters to wear face masks. I would expect in a couple of days the government will announce it uh, because there's public pressure on that. Also today, Our Lady of Lebanon Cathedral farewelled one of its parishioners, 80-year-old Jamili Joseph. She became the first person in New South Wales in two weeks to die from COVID-19. Ironically, she contracted the virus in the very place of worship where she was farewelled today. Sally. The Prime Minister has apologised for the failings in aged care, insisting lessons have been learned and implemented. Live to Olivia Leeming in Canberra. Olivia, it follows damning evidence at the Aged Care Royal Commission. Yes, today was the Prime Minister's first press conference since Monday as he tries to diffuse mounting pressure over the deaths in aged care with allegations at the Royal Commission that the sector was not prepared to protect residents from the pandemic and still isn't, that the lessons from Dorothy Henderson Lodge and Newmarch House weren't conveyed to, to the rest of the industry. The Prime Minister conceding there have been challenges with understaffing, with transferring residents to hospital and communicating with families. And that was that you did we completely reject the assertion that there was a plan, not a plan, because there was a plan. And on those days that we fall short, we're sorry. If this is a plan, I'd hate to see what it would be if it was unplanned. And Olivia, we've also heard from the Reserve Bank. What's it revealed about interest rates? Yeah, Governor Philip Lowe has told an economics committee that there will be no increase to interest rates for at least three years, possibly as long as five years, with the economic outlook still fairly grim. Unemployment set to peak, he says, at 10 per cent later this year and linger around 7 per cent for a few years yet. We need to be prepared for a recovery, that, recovery that's uneven and that's bumpy. High unemployment is likely to be with us for some time. I think it should be a concern for us all. Now, the RBA governor also warned that there could be consequences for the planned increase to the superannuation guarantee from the current 9.5% to 12%, warning today that it could cost jobs. And we heard from the Prime Minister, he's leaving the door open to freezing that rate, given the state of the economy, Sal. OK, thanks for that. Olivia Leeming there. New Zealand's coronavirus cluster is growing and spreading. A further 12 cases were confirmed there overnight with 
one more probable infection. Of greatest concern, two new cases 200 kilometres south of Auckland linked to the original outbreak. There are signs we have found this outbreak relatively early in its life. The level three restrictions and the speed in which they were implemented will have made a material difference in containing the spread of this outbreak. Auckland is set to keep its current restrictions for 12 days, but Jacinda Ardern says there are no signs the city will enter stage four restrictions. The World Health Organisation says people shouldn't fear the virus entering the food chain. It comes after the New Zealand outbreak was linked to a cold storage company and China reported traces of COVID on frozen food packaging. There is no evidence that food or the food chain <clears throat> is participating in transmission of this virus and people should uh, feel comfortable uh, and feel safe. The WHO was also quizzed on the controversial Russian vaccine which it stopped short of endorsing. Joe Biden has called for a nationwide mandate for masks, even making it the basis of his latest campaign ad. The man who hopes to be president, calling it a patriotic duty that will save tens of thousands of lives. It's not about your rights, it's about your responsibilities as an American. The US has now recorded over 5 million coronavirus cases and almost 170,000 deaths. A woman has fallen several metres from scaffolding at a work site in Sydney's west. Fire crews, paramedics and police worked carefully to get the 30-year-old to safety. She'd been working on the seventh floor of a Maryland's building site when she fell. It's believed she suffered a broken jaw and a broken leg. Dramatic vision has been released of the moment a car crashed into a service station. Police say the driver was almost five times the legal alcohol limit, as Isabel Mullen reports. Well, it's been described as nothing short of a miracle. Somehow no one was injured when a car became airborne and crashed into this service station. Running a red light and losing control, a car is airborne before it ploughs into a petrol bowser at the Caltech service station in Slacks Creek. I mean, it just could have been absolute carnage. If that service station was open, that could have ignited. It's December 2019. Police releasing this vision today to warn drivers. What's your story? I caused it. You caused she it? Drove the other car. And how is this crash being caused? Because I was drinking. The 32 year old driver recorded an alcohol reading of 0.225%, making him nearly five times the legal limit. Absolutely lucky that he had no injuries, as well as the other innocent party. Quite often, innocent parties are involved. Mum and dad's taking their kids out, coming home, and they're the ones that end up suffering as well. The man was charged with one count of dangerous operation of a motor vehicle while adversely affected by an intoxicating substance and driving unlicensed. The consequences of drink driving are absolutely catastrophic. The driver was sentenced to six months jail. Police hope this video will remind people just how dangerous it is to drink and drive. Meteorologist David Brown joins us now. Afternoon to you, Brownie. What's the latest on the weather front? Well, as you can see, uh, Sally, the rain is starting to uh, sweep in from the north. In fact, uh, it reached the city just a short time ago. In fact, as we look at current conditions, you'll notice it's sitting on 17 degrees. As we go to the radar, we can now track this substantial rain band. There's Gradually tracking south, I think we'll see 10 to 20 millimetres fall across most of the metro area overnight. Now, Sydney's total water storage at the moment stands at 97.5% capacity. That's right, Warragamba, Sydney's largest dam, brimming at 99%. Amazing. As we go to our future radar, you'll notice that rain clearing during the early hours of tomorrow morning. But having said that, there's some instability in this Wesley airstream that will follow and it may trigger the odd afternoon convective shower. In the basin at the moment, it's wet in Penrith. It's 15 degrees. Liverpool, while it's sitting on 17, the rain's not too far away from there. To the north in Terry Hills, it's raining 14 degrees. Weekend weather in detail. Top of the hour, Sally. All right, thanks for that, Brownie. We'll see you then. Still to come in Sydney's afternoon news on 7, our city's violence hotspot, the suburb at the centre of these terrifying attacks. Exclusive access, what's being done now to prevent another horror bushfire season. And trapped beneath a car, the police rescue to save a man from being crushed. Do you know a farmer ready to find love? Dob him in. 
it's definitely the most an amazing adventure. Farmer Wants a Wife is looking for lonely hearts ready to find their soulmate. I'm gonna fall in love and live happily ever after. Dob in a farmer at farmerwantsawife.com.au. At Harvey Norman, purchase a selected queen-size Australian-made mattress or ensemble for the price of a double. King-size Australian-made mattress or ensemble for the price of a queen. Upsize now on all the great Australian-made brands. King Coil, Sealy Posturepedic, Sleepmaker and Beautyrest. Plus, take advantage of 60 months interest-free available now. Purchase a selected Australian-made queen-size mattress or ensemble for the price of a double. King-size Australian-made mattress or ensemble for the price of a queen. Limited time only at Harvey Norman. You shouldn't need to choose between looking after your health and risking your well-being to receive the treatment you need. That's why NIB members can now access and claim on telehealth consultations for a range of services included in their extras cover, such as physiotherapy, dietetics, psychology and more. So it's easy to stay healthy while staying at home. To find out more, search NIB today. It's worth it. Feel the clarity of non-drowsy Claritine for fast, powerful 24-hour hay fever and allergy relief from sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes and skin. Because stuffed animals are clearly no substitute for real ones. Feel the clarity and live Claritine clear. And here we have the Ophora mandarins from Aldi. Such a sweet pair. Oh, mm -hmm. perfect landing. Refreshing technique. Mm. I hear they're on sale now. Uh -huh. mm. Aldi, good, different. Exactly. Here's Lisa. She got no assistance lifting this heavy bag of cement and sprang a leak. But Lisa has Poise. New Poise Thin and Discreet Extra Pads are 45% thinner than Poise Extra Pads with the same protection. It takes Poise. Pino Clean Simply Wipes are our new way to disinfect. They kill 99.9% .9 of germs with a plant-based disinfectant active and they're made with 100% biodegradable fibres. New Pino Clean Simply. Aqua Doc 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 Police fear for the well-being of a woman in Bathurst. Prompted by reports of a woman's screams, failed to reveal any clues. We think there's people in Bathurst who have been holding on to secrets for some time. Hills is such an iconic Aussie brand and an Aussie invention. Um, I have a Hills voice at home, my grandparents have one. When you think of Hills, you think of the iconic rotary clothesline, but there's plenty of different options. We've got the fold down options for your retractable clotheslines to suit different needs. It's a good combination of the Aussie spirit, I suppose. Bunnings and Hills voice, yeah. Where you find a competitor's lower price on the same stocked item will beat it by 10%. Bunnings Shop at Bunnings wherever you are, whenever you want. In news just in this afternoon, Premier Gladys Berry Jicklin has delivered on her promise to provide transparent access to the findings from the Ruby Princess Inquiry. Those details were made public just moments ago. Taylor Orbach is across this breaking story and joins us this afternoon. Taylor, take us through some of the details that we've found out so far. Yes, Sal. Well, this report finally landed on the Premier's desk literally minutes ago and was released to the public virtually immediately. We know as we digest through some of those findings that it is not good news for New South Wales Health. Brett Walker SC, the Commissioner, was damning in his findings, uh, pointing out uh, three main areas where they let New South Wales and indeed Australia down, describing their conduct as inexplicable, unjustifiable. Uh, those, those relate to their collection of swabs on board the Ruby Princess, the fact that passengers weren't isolated in their cabins despite showing symptoms, and also the fact that they considered the ship to be, quote, low risk. Uh, Brett Walk has always also made criticisms of Carnival, the operators of the Ruby Princess ship, but it seems so far that Border Force and federal agencies, despite criticism from the Labor government federally, have dodged a bullet here. It doesn't seem to be that there are any adverse findings against them. Hopefully this report will put an end to some of the finger pointing. I spoke earlier to crime author Duncan McNabb, who's been following the inquiry. This is what he had to say. 
No one seems keen to take full responsibility for what happened. This inquiry will hopefully nail who was responsible and why. And Taylor, now that the findings are in, what happens from here? Well, I think the process now will be one of reckoning at uh, the highest levels of government in New South Wales as Macquarie Street absorbs these damning recommendations from Brett Walker. The question for Gladys Berejiklian, of course, will be should heads roll and how many in the New South Wales Health Department and across the New South Wales government. Of course, I also spoke to New South Wales poli Police earlier this afternoon and they assure me that their criminal investigation is still very much ongoing and we'll have full details of today's bombshell report in bulletins at 6 o'clock. So. OK, thank you very much, Taylor, for that latest breaking news there. Work is underway to clear more than 1,000 trees along our major highways in preparation for the bushfire season. State political reporter Alex Hart is on the south coast for us. Alex, it's to ensure we don't have a repeat of last season. Well, Sally, one of the biggest issues during the fires was getting people out of the danger zone. With the Princess Highway cut for several days, people were effectively trapped in fire-affected communities. Burnt out trees fallen across the road, also damaged power lines, causing major safety concerns. This program is expected to remove more than a thousand trees between Nowra and the Victorian border that have been assessed as being a high risk of falling over and potentially cutting off communities in future disasters. And this is absolutely critical because we need these communities to be able to evacuate quickly if there is another disaster in those areas. Experts have been working their way along the highway here and also along the Guida Highway in the state's north over the past couple of weeks, identifying which trees to remove. The environmental impact is a key consideration. We're chipping up as much as we can of the trees and putting it back into the environment for ground cover. The report from the inquiry into the state's bushfire crisis hasn't been released publicly yet, but Seven News understands it is critical of the Transport Department for failing to reduce roadside vegetation in the past. The Transport Minister has been pushing for more to be done since his house in Batemans Bay was almost destroyed by a fire on New Year's Eve. The last thing anyone wants to see is you know, tens of thousands of people being forced out of a region during a fire event banked up traffic and potentially being overrun by wildfire. The tree removal program is expected to be finished by October when the bushfire season officially starts. Sally. Thank you, Alex. Police are pleading with people in Auburn to help them track down the culprits responsible for a series of robberies that are increasing in violence. The latest was last night. A shop attendant threatened with a pistol and robbed for just a few hundred dollars. Andrew Denny has more. Well, good afternoon. Police say they have grave concerns over this string of armed robberies in and around this Auburn area of Sydney as they're growing increasingly violent. The most recent happened just after six o'clock last night when a man walked into a convenience store at Silverwater holding a pistol. He threatened the 20-year-old attendant behind the counter, demanding he hand over the cash from the register. This was like a nightmare. I've never seen, I've never encountered such thing in my life before. This is the fifth similar incident in recent weeks that local police are investigating at the Kathmandu Mixed Business in June. A young woman chased a thief out of her family's store with a knife, but then two weeks later he returned and brought back up. Two men held the 23-year-old woman down as a third robbed the register. Police think those same men are also behind robberies at another store nearby where they used knives and guns in separate attacks less than a week apart. The level of violence has increased. At the end of the day, uh, guns were involved. Uh, you don't get more any more serious than that. Now, anyone who may be able to help identify these offenders is asked to come forward before anyone else is hurt. There's been an incredible rescue in the US. Police were called to a home in Arizona to find a man pinned underneath his car after a jack had given way. Officers lifted the vehicle weighing over one ton, just enough for him to be saved. I couldn't really take deep breaths whatsoever. When I heard, okay, we're going to lift it up, that's when my vision started to go blurred. I was starting to pass out. He says next time the car needs work, he'll just take to the shop. Just ahead in Seven's afternoon news. Highway surprise, the truck driver forced to act quickly. Find out what happens next. Breast cancer breakthrough right here in Sydney. Details of this major development coming up a little later. 
And as well with Matt Shervington, Sonny Bill arrives to rescue the roosters from their injury nightmare. Tonight on 7 News with Michael Usher. Who was to blame for the Ruby Princess disaster? Armed robbery terror, the Sydney suburb on high alert, and why homeowners are in for a big win. Tonight on 7 News at 6. From the acclaimed producers... The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. I reckon that's quite a mouthful. ...comes the movie premiere tonight on 7. The world needs more cooks, because with a hot pan and a little love pack, a cook can tame the wild, feed the hungry, and transform nothing into everything. Where there are cooks, there is hope. 100% of our water requirements are met with recycled water. It's about giving back to our communities for future generations. There's more to Australian mining. Authorised by Tanya Constable, Minerals Council of Australia, Canberra. Pre-rinsing wastes up to 40 litres of water. Let's end this. With Finnish, if you promise to stop pre-rinsing, we'll donate 40 litres of water to those who need it most. Join the movement. Finnish. Australia introducing Coles & Co. Coles new home for great value and food inspiration every day. It's full of delicious new recipes from Curtis Stone, Luke Mangan, Courtney Rolston and all our favourite chefs. Find trending tips, tricks and hacks to help you answer what's for breakfast, lunch or dinner every day. So for great value and great new food inspiration, check out Coles & Co. today and every day at coles.com.au. Coles, good things, great value. Budget Direct has won the 2020 CanStar Award for Outstanding Value Car Insurance. That's 14 years in a row, so why not switch to... Get a Budget Direct quote today. Aquadax, limited edition from step one. Quack, quack. Boring, conservative, fabulous. Please responsibly with Sportsbet's new expert tips from Best Bets. Compare the experts' best and value picks for the day and add them straight to your bet slip. <laughs> the world's most exotic fragrances are made by nature. That's why we've created Botanica fragrances infused with natural ingredients that are responsibly sourced. Botanica by Airwick. Everyone knows Australia has four big banks, but the fifth biggest retail bank is regularly voted one of the most trusted brands in Australia, looks after more than 1.8 million customers and can be found in over 500 locations nationwide. So try Bendigo Bank, the better big bank. What if you're missing information that could affect your child's future? Like important information about meningococcal disease, a rare but potentially deadly and devastating illness, most common in infants and adolescents. Missing information could mean missing out on a whole lot more. Speak to your doctor for more information on meningococcal disease and how you can help protect your family. A group of men armed with baseball bats have forced their way into a home in Sydney's southwest overnight. Police say they found an injured man and woman inside the Bankstown home suffering possible broken bones. They were taken to hospital for treatment. A hunt is underway for a gang of attackers. A quick-thinking truckie has given us a very good reason why not to tailgate. This is the moment the driver had to swerve to avoid a car stopped in the middle of a busy highway. It happened on the Picton Road exit at Wollongong, south of Sydney. His swift action stopped the truck from rear-ending the car, avoiding a potentially fatal crash. And a driver has escaped unscathed after his car erupted into flames on the Hume Highway near Campbelltown. The car was destroyed in the blaze, but the driver was uninjured. Police are investigating how the fire started. Sport now with Matt Shervington and Matt, the reigning premiers are really. Hello, Sally. Yeah, very concerning, actually. The Roosters' injury crisis deepened in a heavy loss at, to the storm at the SCG last night. There were fears Luke Keary had suffered internal injuries and a heavy tackle in the first half. He was rushed to hospital where scans revealed a badly broken rib that could sideline him for up to a month. 
Lachlan Lamb injured his ankle while the retiring Mitch Orbison could finish his career one short of the club's games record. He has a suspected broken wrist. The Storm also lost Suliasi Vunavalu and Jerome Hughes. It was like a, a mash unit out there tonight. I can't remember an injury toll like that. Not having buys and obviously the rule changes have increased the intensity. Now, Trent Robinson ruled out rushing Sonny Bill Williams into the side. Apparently, he needs to build his fitness first. The win moves Melbourne to the top of the ladder for now. Raiders coach Ricky Stewart has defended his under-fire Broncos counterpart, Anthony Seabold. Police are investigating the source of a number of slanderous online rumours that are doing the rounds. Brisbane have lurched from one crisis to the next this year and could pick up the club's first ever wooden spoon. It's been a hard enough season for him and I think it's disgusting that uh, um, if it's incorrect that that can uh, publicly be aired. Seabold is self-isolating after leaving the Broncos bubble to attend a serious family issue. The Raiders host the struggling Broncos in Canberra tomorrow night. The Swans have humiliated GWS by 41 points in a Sydney derby boil over at Perth's Optus Stadium. The Giants were kept to just nine points in the first half against the young Sydney side, cause, causing GWS captain Stephen Cornelio to slam his side at half time. Yeah, hopeless really. Um, got to get in there and find an answer. We are been in this position twice in, in two weeks and we've got to find something now. The second half didn't prove much better for the Giants as the Swans kept them to just 25 points for the match, their equal lowest score ever. We need to have some home truths. To six games to go, and uh, if we serve up that trot, then um, there's going to be inconsistent performances like we've had for the majority of the year. The Giants could fall out of the top eight by the end of the weekend. Novak Djokovic has confirmed he'll play at this month's US Open, but the worrying trend of player withdrawals continues. Fans got creative to catch a glimpse of the 31st battle between the Williams sisters at the lead-up event in Kentucky. Serena defeated Venus in three sets to book a spot in the third round. I honestly didn't come here to win for the first time in my career. I just came here to get some matches and, and see what happens. Defending women's champion Bianca Andreescu is the latest star to pull out of the US Open, citing health concerns. A bargain buy from Adelaide is the third horse locked in to run in our $15 million sprint race, the Everest. Inglis have chosen Gitra to run in their slot for the big race at Randwick on October 17. Purchased for $40,000, the four-year-old now gets a shot at the $6.2 million first prize. Really happy. Confirmed it yesterday and I was told not to tell anyone. Being a bit hard keeping it from the owners. Gitra joins Chris Waller's star Nature Strip and classic legend as confirmed runners. Professional cycling is often referred to as a torture test. Well, what you're about to see takes it to a whole new level. Shortly after the leading riders cross the finish line in stage two of the Dauphiné race in France, a massive hailstorm lashed the rest of the peloton. Riders and spectators ducked for cover on the side of the road as the hail pelted down, but their efforts were largely futile. Belgian rider Tim de Klerk showed off his hail damage on social media. Now, that is a different jersey wow. of a different kind. That is we haven't brutal. seen that before. Do you know what? You can't all be winners, but let's hail them all as champions this time around. Oh, Matt, that joke's terrible, the but shocker, they are brave going out Very in that. Brave. All right, this afternoon's top stories are next, including findings made public, the Ruby Princess Inquiry report revealed, our youngest COVID death, the start warning as infection numbers surge again. The driver behind this shocking pile-up faces court, details of his sentence next, and why Donald Trump's taking credit for bringing peace to the Middle East. You might think you know the Azaria Chamberlain story. The dingo's got my baby. Sorry, but you don't. secret police tapes you were never meant to hear. We've got confirmed fetal blood. She's a religious nut. There was crucial evidence the jury never heard. Have we got the car? This very car. 
if you hadn't have found the jacket, Lindy may still be in jail. That's right. This was the evidence that proved innocence. Don't trust the police. The Lindy Tapes, Sunday 8.30 on 7. What if someone you lost returned? Did your son go missing, sir? My son died 32 years ago. Daddy! <laughs> Honey, who is it? Jacob. The DNA test came back. Jacob is your son. The mystery that captivated the world is here on 7 Plus. You believe? Believe what? The impossible? The powerful drama event, Resurrection. Streaming for free on 7 Plus. Hello. Done. 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 Create a space where you can get stuff done. done. Officeworks, helping you make bigger things happen. Done, 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 done. Et voilà, a perfume for the toilet. Delightful, but there's a breath way. Breath Deluxe, inspired by fine fragrances. It helps keep your toilet shiny and clean with a luxurious scent. New Breath Deluxe, our first perfume for your toilet. These are step one underwear. These are standard cotton underwear. Step ones have lycra panels between the legs to stop chafing. These don't have that. These are made of organic bamboo, which wicks away your sweat. Buy these online at stepone.life. These just don't buy. Get step ones. When did every day start to feel like one of those days? It's why we developed Panadol Rapid. Absorbed two times faster than regular Panadol tablets, so you can keep pace with the day. The thing is, Today's pace takes a toll. It's time to rethink how we look after ourselves. Because every positive change, no matter how small, can make all the difference. Together, let's rethink care. From home time to sleepy time, IKEA designs around life's precious moments. So make mess, mohawks, and laugh until your belly hurts. Because with IKEA, there really is no place like home. This winter, cut your cold and flu short with EasyCold and reduce the severity of symptoms. Shorten your cold and get better quicker with EasyCold. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Sally Bowery. Welcome back to our Martin Place headquarters. These are our top stories on 7. A man in his 20s dies from coronavirus, the stark warning behind the nation's youngest casualty. Sydney's school cluster growing as a Parramatta church farewells our state's latest COVID victim. The Prime Minister says sorry, Scott Morrison owns up to aged care failings. And Ruby Princess exposed the report into the COVID bungle made public. A Victorian man in his 20s has become the youngest Australian to die from coronavirus. The state recorded 372 new cases today, but there's now hope that Victoria may be past the peak of the virus. A grim record no one wanted to reach. A Victorian man in his 20s has become the youngest Australian to die with the virus. Uh, I can't speak to the circumstances of that individual, and it may well be that, that the coroner uh, we'll, we'll look at that matter. A total of 14 people lost their COVID fight in the last 24 hours. 12 of those linked to aged care. 659 people are now in hospital, including 26 on ventilators. On a day of tragedy, the Chief Health Officer did offer some hope. I'm very confident we've seen the peak. Um, but it's got to come down quickly. Victoria finally tracking in the right direction, with the seven-day average below 400. Cases in regional Victoria have also dropped, but the source of 51 cases across the state remains a mystery. And right through it, there's been about one in five or 20 per cent of cases uh, that are mystery cases or, or cases of unknown acquisition. But not everyone is getting the message. Police caught more than 250 people breaking restrictions, including one man who breached the rules more than 10 times showing there's still a long way to go. But we're finally on the right side of the second wave. I'm very confident it's true, and we don't know what tomorrow will necessarily bring, but the trend is definitely downwards, uh, and that we'll continue to see lower numbers um, 
overall. Jacqueline Felgate, 7 News. There are increased calls to make masks mandatory on public transport throughout Sydney. The opposition saying there's now overwhelming pressure. Today, Our Lady of Lebanon Cathedral farewelled 80-year-old Jamili Joseph, the state's first person in two weeks to die from COVID-19. Her grandson is at home at the moment. He's in isolation and her, two, her three kids in hospitals. And for her kids not to be with her, that's very sad. The state has recorded nine new cases today, five of which are locally acquired, one from a mystery source. A damning report from the Ruby Princess Inquiry has landed on the New South Wales Premier's desk. Brett Walker SC says in his findings, New South Wales Health has made serious mistakes, including passengers not being isolated in cabins, a failure to ensure swabs on board were collected, and also the decision to assess the risk from the Ruby Princess as low. That last point has been labelled inexplicable and unjustifiable. There doesn't appear to be any serious criticism levelled at Border Force agents in this report. It was released almost immediately to the public. Ms Berejiklian posted the link to her Twitter saying she will take the weekend to thoroughly read it, then respond early next week. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has apologised for how the government has handled the aged care crisis during COVID-19. During a press conference, the PM says he's deeply sorry for the days where expectations are not met. On some days, the pandemic gets the better of us, and on other days, it doesn't. And I think we've got to have a reality check about this. There are no absolute guarantees in a global pandemic. He insists Australia is in the fight and going to win it. There's been a landmark diplomatic breakthrough in the Middle East with Israel and the United Arab Emirates agreeing to a full normalisation of relations. As US Bureau Chief Ash Mulaney reports, President Trump is claiming a major victory. Good afternoon. Well, for Israel and the United Arab Emirates, this marks both a major political achievement and a tectonic shift in the region. But it's Donald Trump here in Washington that's receiving praise and claiming credit for brokering the deal. He made the surprise announcement, tweeting a statement and speaking from the Oval Office this morning. The deal is the first of its kind for Israel and a Gulf nation. The countries will now open up travel, trade and embassies, a partnership founded on a shared concern about the threat of Iran. This deal will allow much greater access to Muslims from throughout the world to visit the many historic sites in Israel, which the Muslims want to see very badly and have wanted to see for many, many decades. This is the greatest advancements toward peace between Israel and the Arab world in the last 26 years, and it marks the third formal peace between Israel and an Arab nation. Netanyahu has described it as a new age in relations between Israel and the Arab world. But there are still questions and contentions about his promise to suspend the annexation of land in the West Bank. The US president wanted to call it the Donald J. Trump Accord, but settled on the Abraham Accord. Either way, this is a major coup for the commander in chief just three months out from an election. Former Fiji rugby league player Ratu Nanovo has walked out of prison after being granted bail, charged over a brutal stabbing attack after a match. The court heard the 19-year-old went to his car to get a knife before he stabbed an opponent and two spectators. As part of his bail conditions, he cannot play league and is confined to his home. A woman has been killed after she lost control of her car and crashed into a concrete barrier on a major road near the Anzac Bridge. She was driving along the Western Distributor at Piermont shortly after midnight when the accident happened. Paramedics treated the woman at the scene before rushing her to St Vincent's Hospital. Sadly, she could not be saved. A driver who lost control of his vehicle causing a near-fatal crash at Gladesville has narrowly avoided jail time. Evan Batten has the details from Campbelltown Court. This alley is so often we're used to seeing the spotlight put on all the fatalities in road accidents. But here is a very serious high-speed crash that has left many people suffering serious health effects for years after. This was two years ago in Gladesville when Kwati Lu crashed his BMW at high speed. Police say he was doing more than 100 kilometres an hour in a 60 zone along Victoria Road at Gladesville. He left three people in hospital for many weeks. 
and then with many months more of rehabilitation after that, some of them are still suffering nightmares. So many people could have lost their lives that day. Sorry, no comment. Now Lou has pleaded guilty to two counts of dangerous driving, each of them attracting up to seven years jail and a further count of furiously causing grievous bodily harm. That carries another two years jail. The judge agreed though that the Chinese national who has a very poor driving record with nine other speeding offences could serve his jail term in the community instead of full-time custody. Good character arguments centred on his love of cats and his apparent efforts to help homeless kittens find adoption. Your love of kittens kept you out of jail. Do you want to say anything to the victims, the people who still haven't recovered from the accident? Lou will also have to carry out 500 hours of community service while he's monitored in the community by Community Corrections for the next two years and ten months. Sally. Thank you, Evan. We're learning more about the victims of that deadly train derailment in Scotland. The train's conductor, driver, as well as one passenger were killed when their carriage overturned as it was forced off the tracks. Authorities had been warned about dangerous landslips. Well, I think actually with global warming and the changes in our weather, we're all experiencing the summer, uh, we're seeing these in, in, in real time, aren't we? Dozens of similar sites across Britain are now being inspected. These stunning pictures are from a wildfire currently ripping through a valley in the US state of Oregon. It's estimated more than 80 hectares of land has been scorched in quick time, prompting mass evacuations, with hundreds of buildings now under threat. Actor Cuba Gooding Jr has returned to court after his sexual misconduct case was delayed due to the pandemic. The 52-year-old is accused of groping women in three separate nightclub incidents, allegations he denies. The Oscar winner declined to speak outside court but did remove his mask to reveal a Black Lives Matter message. We're live to ComSec for the latest on your money next. Plus, breast cancer treatment, the local discovery set to save lives. World's best inside the remarkable exhibition set to go on show in Sydney. And it's 17 degrees in Cronulla. Browning has the forecast soon. with the winner to be Premiership favourites. This will be the biggest moment. But then, is this their last roll of the dice? Oh, no. The Blues face the Dockers. It all starts tonight on 7, mate. Up to 40% off Tempo Queen mattresses. Sleep fresh at Domain. Tempo mattresses are antimicrobial and hypoallergenic with an easy clean removable cover. Buy a Tempo Queen mattress now and save up to 40%. Plus, add on a Queen Ease adjustable base for only $1. You'll love the lifestyle benefits of a Tempo adjustable base complete with wireless remote. That's up to 40% off Tempo Queen mattresses plus our $1 adjustable base offer. Take advantage of 60 months interest free available for a limited time now at Domain. There's a glass and a half in everyone. My legs are like tree trunks, and when tree trunks walk together, they chafe. But step one has got you covered. We put these lycra panels between the legs. It glides when you walk. You can buy them online at stepone.life. Step one, get some. Oh dear, it looks like she's not feeling too good. A cup of Lemsip Max should do the trick. It's all-in-one formula. Fights eight major cold and flu symptoms. Try the power of Lemsip. Now available in capsules. Et voila, a perfume for the toilet. Delightful, but there's a breath way. Breath Deluxe, inspired by fine fragrances. It helps keep your toilet shiny and clean with a luxurious scent. New Breath Deluxe, our first perfume for your toilet. First time colouring your hair at home? Try Garnier Olea, the number one permanent hair colour with no ammonia, powered by oil. My hair colour is now so bright and natural. It's oil-based, all signs of damage gone and zero greys. Experience the difference with Olea for exceptional colour or your money back, guaranteed by Garnier, naturally. And now find your perfect shade virtually on garnier.com.au.
Warhammer Mortal Realms, week by week create incredibly detailed miniatures with brushes and paints to build a stunning Age of Sigmar collection and take them to battle on the tabletop. Enter the Mortal Realms with Warhammer Age of Sigmar, issue one, out now. Pay less every day at the good guys. This Bosch Washer 797. This Dyson V7 Vacuum 498. This ILO Pro 3 2 Camera Kit 799. And this Hitachi 65 inch TV 1499. Pay less every day only at the good guys. Tempting them. $40,000. Teasing them. $50,000. Life changing money on the line. New The Chase. Weekdays on 7. The fire department was called in to rescue a man found stuck to a Hollywood billboard with duct tape. That man was notorious TV thrill seeker Steve O, who was promoting his new comedy special. The serial prankster had posted about it on social media, urging the city not to waste resources on helping him. Time to check in with Finance Now with Stephen Daglin at Comsec for us this afternoon. Hello to you, Stephen. An encouraging end to the week for the Aussie share market. Uh, good afternoon, Sally. Exactly right. Look, the Aussie market up about half a percent today, which means this officially has been the best week for our market since early July. We had gains of about 2% in five days, and we're only a little over a percent away from the best levels in five months as well. And what seemed to help at around lunch today were updates on China's economy, our largest trading partner, which were generally encouraging, showing that its economy is still uh, continuing to recover and expand. Uh, the Aussie market today, well, gains across the board. We had National Bank up about 1% on a quarterly update. Baby Bunting, the retailer, up 10% on a lift in sales, profits and its largest dividend ever. Mesoblast was up 40%. This is a biotechnology firm that's uh, focused on stem cell treatments. Well, it rose after US authorities voted in favour of one of its products. And the Aussie dollar finally sits at about 71.5 US, Sally. In there from Comsec for us this afternoon. Well, Sydney researchers have made a promising discovery as they work towards a new treatment for an aggressive form of breast cancer. As Nina Stevens reports, they're honing in on a finding which could help the immune system fight the disease. Women who are diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer can have a poor prognosis and currently there are limited treatment options. Now a discovery at the Garvin Institute of Medical Research unearthing four new subtypes of cells in patients with that particular kind of cancer. They have found one of them produces specific molecules which stops the immune cells suppressing tumours, working out that if they can block that process, that could in turn activate the immune system to fight the disease. They might have important functions in controlling the behaviour of disease and the way it responds to treatment. We're excited about it and uh, we're already moving forward. Beata Larson was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer last year. She underwent chemotherapy and a double mastectomy and donated tissue towards this research. It was a no-brainer because if I can do anything at all to help research for future sufferers, you know, it would be fantastic. Researchers will now further analyse breast cancer samples to get a better understanding of how to stop the disease progressing with the hope it could lead to a whole new way of treating this type of cancer or improve current treatments. Thank you, Nina. Sydney's 6pm news is coming up with Michael Usher. Yeah. Hello to you, Michael. What are you working on in the newsroom? Hi there, Sally. Here's what we have for you tonight. Breaking news this afternoon. Inexplicable and unjustifiable mistakes. Part of the damning report into the Ruby Princess debacle released this past hour. It's not looking good for New South Wales Health. We're analysing the report in the newsroom now. We'll bring you the full details on who was to blame tonight, 6 o'clock. The state's latest coronavirus victim, a beloved great-grandmother, has been honoured at the Western Sydney Church where the deadly cluster originated. Plus, the social distancing fail at a Lidcombe wedding, so will the venue there be investigated? Scott Morrison's made a shock admission over his government's failings in the aged care sector. Shop workers on alert in Auburn after a spate of frightening armed robberies in the area, the latest with a pistol. And Sydney homeowners are about to get a big win. The major change is set to benefit every suburb and what that means for your budget. So, Sally, we'll have that for you. Plenty more, of course, in Sydney 7 News at 6 o'clock. Thanks for that, Michael. See you then. It is 4.49. Let's get a check on Sydney's traffic.
Good afternoon, it's Andrea Panemo here in the Oz Relief Traffic Chopper. Due to the incoming downpour, we are just hovering over the airport right now, but seeing lengthy delays through Eastern Creek on the M7 southbound from a breakdown at Walgrove Road, delays are back to Dean Park. Oz Relief is in Beirut with food and hygiene packs, medicine and more following the devastating blast. To donate to the Lebanon Crisis Appeal, visit ozrelief.org. The State Library is busy in putting the final touches on its new World Press Photo Exhibition going on show to the public tomorrow. It's the 20th year the Library will host the exhibit and Amber Laidler has been given a sneak peek. This exhibition features more than 150 images captured by 44 photographers from 24 different countries. It is the best of the best from the prestigious World Press Photo Contest. The photographs showcase a variety of topics from 2019 and features a number of Australian photographers, including Matthew Abbott, who was awarded second place in the New Spot Stories for his coverage of the recent summer bushfires. His photographs in particular, the world saw and were amazed at what we were experiencing over last summer and into early this year. The State Library will be the only Australian venue to host the exhibition this year with a number of COVID safe measures in place. It will run for double the length of time it normally does to encourage social distancing. With coronavirus causing chaos for international freight, getting the exhibition here was a mighty challenge. It was originally meant to take place in May and just Days ago, organisers weren't sure if it could go ahead. Their precious cargo stuck in customs. Their paperwork lost somewhere in Belgium. I hope um, when people come on site, they really appreciate the effort that's gone into getting this here. It opens tomorrow and will be on show until October 18th. Thank you, Amber. Next in Sevens Afternoon News, David Brown is here with your latest forecast. Whose country has the best food on the planet? This is the World Cup of cooking. Team France. Elegancy, technicality, and a lot of love. Up against Team Australia. Australian modern cuisine is going to stand up against the world heavyweights of cooking. Everything we do is very technical. A little bit of this. Thank you, Italy. A little bit of that. Thank you, China. A little bit of this. Thank you, France. Whose food would you choose? Australia, meat and three veg. It sounds better in French. Uh, la viande et trois légumes. Ah. <laughs> Welcome to Plate of Origin. Hello. Hello. Have a good day. Shut up and take my money. When pain and fever symptoms strike, a kiss can make them feel better. But for effective relief through the night, there's Nurofen for children. Starts to reduce fever from 15 minutes, lasts for up to 8 hours, and is trusted by 9 out of 10 Australian parents. Somebody just knocked at my door. I left this package there. Oh, this is dope. Wait, there's a massive stain on it. <laughs> and this vanish. I feel like this is some kind of challenge. Let's go figure this out. To add half a scoop to cold water. Let's see if we can get this stain out. Yeah, I actually can't believe how quick it's working. So I got the jumper on now. I'm actually feeling this. For amazing results, just cold wash with Vanish Oxy Action. Cookie people, cream people, crumbs people, clean people, twist people, lick people, dunk people, munch people. It's on the play, people. If you twist, lick, dunk, then you're my people. We are Oreo people. New Yumi's Veggie Burgers, the delicious way to eat less meat. With the goodness of fresh veggies and no preservatives, they're bursting with flavour. Great taste you could feel good about. New Yumi's Veggie Burgers. Don't get stuck in pain. Voltaren Emil Gel relieves muscle pain two times faster and reduces inflammation to help get you moving sooner. Voltaren Emil Gel, available with no mess applicator. Unlike ordinary toothpaste, Colgate Total's breakthrough formula actively fights bacteria for 12 hours, keeping your whole mouth healthy. Colgate Total, be totally ready for life. Tempting them. Four 
$40,000. Teasing them. $50,000. With life-changing money on the line, they better stay focused. You are focusing on the moment. Because the Tiger Mom, you are feeling the now, is ready to strike. Oh, wow. New The Chase, weekdays at 5 on 7. Now to some handsome little devils which have been given a clean bill of health at their very first checkup. These four month old joeys were weighed, microchipped and had their teeth examined by vets at Monato Safari Park in Adelaide. Two males and two female devils were born earlier this year to mum Thumbelina. <laughs> well done mum. <laughs> Meteorologist David Brown is back and he has the latest forecast after Nitty Brownie. Yes, hello Sally. Well the rain has arrived and we're in for a bit of a wet night. 10 to 20 millimetres is likely in most suburbs. But it was been, well, it has been a cooler day than forecast. 17.3 degrees. That happened around uh, late afternoon. We were expecting maximum somewhere in the uh, low 20s, but, well, that didn't happen. Statewide at the moment, you'll notice it's uh, raining all the way from the uh, north right down through the eastern half of our state. It's a wet 16 degrees in Tamworth. Mudgee's sitting on 11. Orange, 8 degrees to the south in the ACT. Canberra at the moment, yes, it's raining there as well. 14 degrees. And, of course, the trough behind this uh, wet weather is gradually drifting south. You know, some storm activity associated with it too. Most of that unfolding at the moment across uh, Victoria. We will see some storms as it uh, gradually moves through overnight. You'll, the thing that stands out, it's taken the bulk of the rain with it offshore during the early hours of the morning, but the air mass is so unstable across the interior, we'll see some afternoon showers and maybe the odd thunderstorm uh, popping up from, well, mid-afternoon. Cold and wet in Melbourne tomorrow, around 15 degrees. Showers and thunderstorms are expected in Brisbane. Most of that activity happening during the morning. For our city, of course, soaking rain tonight, fine tomorrow morning. There is a chance of a thundery shower from around about mid-afternoon. A forecast top, 19 degrees. As we look further ahead, Sunday, the pick of the weekend, dry and sunny. We've got a westerly breeze and remaining dry next week. That's the latest from the Weather Centre. More at 6, Sally. OK, thanks for that, Brownie. And that is Sydney's 4pm news for this Friday. Michael Usher will bring you 7 News at 6. I'm Sally Barry. Stay with 7 now for The Chase Australia and I hope you have a great night. I think you know.